All right, my name's Greg Edding. I'm with USDA Risk Management Agency. If you're not familiar with uh, RMA, we are the agency that oversees the federal crop insurance program. Um, basically how that works is our agency writes all the rules, procedures, does all the rating, uh, T yields um, that go into the crop insurance program, and then that program is administered and serviced through your approved insurance provider and their agents and loss adjusters. This presentation is designed to support and help clarify existing policy provisions and procedures. This presentation does not replace or supersede any procedures or modify any provisions contained in the complete insurance policies. And then as, as Mike from the Corps mentioned earlier, you know, we had the two events uh, last year, the March event and then the end of May, early June event. Um, I'm not going to go any more details on that. We're all aware of what what happened there, but in, in the end, um, we had over a hundred levee systems that breached, that flooded over a half a million acres throughout Iowa, Illinois, Kansas, Missouri, and Nebraska, and 80% of that acreage happened to fall in Missouri. Uh, this slide here shows the total crop insurance flood indemnities, so these are the, the losses in which the, uh, the adjuster said the primary cause of loss was specifically due to flooding. And uh, of course, Missouri's that big long one there in the middle at $93 million, which was three times more than any other state uh, in 2019, with the second highest being Mississippi. Uh, this chart here represents a combined uh, flood and excess moisture claim, and Missouri falled in the top five uh, in this category of indemnities with over $425 million. And then in addition, uh, Missouri received almost $40 million in the uh, prevented planning top-up payments that were part of the 2019 disaster bill. While some of the levy systems that breached have either been repaired or partially repaired, most have not, and in short, premium rates must reflect the risk. For high-risk acreage along rivers, the additive rates charged reflect the number of times that the acreage has flooded over a period of years. Most counties along the Missouri and Mississippi rivers have, had, have multiple sub-county high-risk areas. Each sub-county area has flood history and a risk that is a bit unique from the other sub-county areas. Most of the time, levee overtopping elevation accounts for the uniqueness in the flood history but if there's a hole in the levee, that uniqueness will go away. All of the acreage is now fully exposed to the same level of risk. The Corps of Engineers and other entities are always working to restore the breach levees and reduce the flood risk behind, for the acreage behind it. This process takes time. If they can fix the levee prior to the start of the crop year, then the risk to the acreage behind the levee is restored and the premium rates in the actuarial documents are accurate. If not, then the risk to that acreage is higher than what the actuarial documents reflect. In cases of breach levies, we need to account for both scenarios, the scenario where the levy is restored prior to the start of the crop year, and the scenario where the levies are not restored. And we need to do this in the actuarial documents at filing, which occurs five months prior to the start of the crop year. So we're doing this in October. We do this by using uh, a breached levy statement in the special provisions of insurance. In the 2020 actuarial documents, the high risk rates and actuarial maps reflect the situation where the levies are fixed. This special provision statement allows RMA to adjust the rates if the levies are not fixed by either the sales closing date or the earliest planting date. By addressing the by addressing the breach levies in this manner, we are effectively giving the Corps of Engineers or other entities an extra five months to, to fix these levies. Over the years, we have used a few different variations of this breach levy statement. All have had very similar language. What's new in this, in this version, which is applicable to all spring planted crops for the 2020 crop year, is the language in red. This language adds more flexibility and criteria for levy systems that are repaired, but not to the same height as the original pre-flood levy. The statement allows specifically 
The statement also specifically requires that repairs must be certified either through the Corps of Engineers or a professional engineer that is certified and licensed and registered in the state where the levy is located. Moreover, we're, we are also requiring the insured to sign a statement that damaged soils, if there are any, have been restored. Restoring damaged soils has always been a requirement in the breach levy statement. Now we are requiring the insured, if they have restored damaged soils, to sign a statement to that effect. We have a frequently asked questions document on our webpage that goes into a bit more detail on this, but it will be, it'll be up to the approved insurance provider that makes this determination if damaged soils have been restored, which would be done when processing a claim. The statement is a self-certifying statement, which the insured will keep with his or her crop insurance records. If there is no claim or the, or the insurance company does not find any damaged soils, it, it will be assumed this provision of the statement has been satisfied. And I'll, I'll point out that there is no form uh, from RMA for that statement. Uh, your insurance company may have one, but there is no form directly from RMA on that. These breach levy provisions for the spring planted crops have been added to the following counties in green on the map. There are 33 counties in, in the Topeka's region that has the breach levy statement. Now to get back to the certification requirements for these repairs. For levy systems under the core ju jurisdiction, our office will be able to directly obtain these certifications of these breach levy system repairs from the core. For private levy systems, and there are several that breached, someone will need to provide RMA with a signed and sealed certification from a professional engineer who is certified, licensed, and registered in the state where the levy is located. This can be provided directly to us in any manner uh, email, uh, or you can, if you find yourself in one of these situations, you can always call our office and get our email address and we'll, we'll take it through email. As the sales closing date, which is March 15th, approaches, our office will notify the approved insurance providers of breach levy statuses through informational memorandums. Agents are also welcome to call and ask questions regarding specific levies. We've actually issued two informational memorandums so far, and we're going to try to do that weekly. And then as noted earlier, for, for damaged soils, if any, the insurance company will make the determination if damaged soils have been restored, which is done when processing a claim if there is one. As noted earlier, the new breach levy provisions increase the flexibility to allow for temporary, partial, or interim repairs. Uh, and, and we will need certifications to confirm that these levy repairs have been completed. For temporary, partial, and interim repairs, we will need the same kind of certifications. When we receive those certifications, we will evaluate the new level of protection and calculate a new high risk rate for the acreage protected by that levy system. When we calculate that rate, we will apply it to all the acreage behind the levy system through what's called a blanket written agreement. An insured will not need to submit an individual written agreement request. However. However, or how this is going to work is that RMA will receive the certifications on the new levy heights and the date the repairs were completed. RMA will calculate this new rate based on the, the new minimum overtopping elevation for the partially repaired levy that is tied to a specific river gauge. These new rates will be issued and accessible to all insurance companies and impacted producers through the regional office acceptance system. So in a way, we are writing a blanket offer written agreement that can be applied to all impacted producers in that levy district. We expect, expect the blanket offer written agreements to be issued by RMA sometime in April. Additional informational memorandums will likely be issued to inform insurance companies of these blanket offer written agreements. Okay, so now moving on to the situations in which the core is not able to provide certifications on levy repairs, and, and these are more your private levy situations. This slide represents the information RMA will be specifically requesting. Uh, the first one is what is the levy system name and location? How is the levy system, has the levy system been repaired to prior specifications? And this is just a yes or no answer. Has the levy system been repaired to a temporary permanent level of protection, but not to prior specs. Again, this is also a yes or no answer. Uh, 
provide the date in which the last breach of the was repaired for the system. And then the last one is in the situations in which yes was answered to question three on temporary protection, we are gonna need the minimum overtopping height in feet that is tied to a specific gauge on the tributary. Our office has used the breach levy statement in one form or another for several years, most notably after the 2011 flood, which caused over 90 breaches in the area. To manage the breach levy statement in high risk areas in our region, we will be issuing informational memorandums weekly that will identify by breach levy its repair status. The memo will be categorized by in the breach levy systems into one of, one of three categories. Uh, the first would be certified to prior specs, meaning it was fully restored. The second is not repaired or not certified as repaired. The third is temporary, certified temporarily or permanently repaired, but not to prior specs. So this situation would be the levy provides some protection, just not to what it was prior to the flood event. Lastly, the memo will also include maps of land impacted by unrepaired or partially repaired levy systems. The memo and map will be available on our webpage and electronically on an FTP server. There's a, an example of what the three different categories of the, the memo look like. And then here's a, an example of what one of the maps looks like. Okay, this slide here represents all of the levies that have been repaired to prior specs in which we have, our office has received certifications on. I think there's eight on the list. And this slide represents the list of levy systems in which we've received certifications that a partial or temporary repair has been completed. Again, these are, these are fluid situations. They change just about every day um, that we, because we're in contact with the Corps of Engineers uh, fairly often in our office, and uh, we work with Judd and Mike's group, um, along with the other core districts, uh, to keep this list up to date. Okay, he says we got some more coming. <laughs> uh, I have noted when temporary partial interim repairs have been made, the insurer does not need to submit a written agreement request. For these kinds of repairs, we need, this, we need the necessary certification of the repairs, but as stated, we can get the certification for these levies in the core program, and for the private levies, the insurer or insurance company can send us the certification directly without a written agreement request. Once we have the certifications, we will evaluate the flood risk for all the acreage behind the levy and apply the calculated high risk rate to the acreage. However, in the past, as in the past, there are times when an insured should submit a written agreement request to our office. And there, there are three situations that fall into this category. First one is if RMA had identified that the acreage was flooded by the breach, but it really wasn't. Uh, the second one is if you disagree with the high risk rate that, that we applied based on the partial or temporary repairs of the levy. And then third is if the levy is fixed after the earliest planting date but before they plant the crop, they can submit a written agreement request, and that's kind of an important one there. As with all the written agreement requests, we will evaluate them based on our procedures in the written agreement handbook. Uh, last slide here is we've got some more information on our website, uh, those frequently asked questions, informational memorandums, and our phone number and email address are on here. I would like also to point out that uh, Patrick Laird He's also from our offices here, and he's got a whole bunch of copies of those frequently asked questions and those informational memorandums. So if you want one of those, stop by and see either me or him. Pat, raise your hand so they can see where you're at. Uh, okay, and so stop by us if you want a copy of one of those. And I'll, uh, one last note I will make is if you find yourself in one of these breach levy scenarios, it's very important that you are in close contact with your crop insurance agent. Your agent takes care of you, they get, paid, they get paid commission to take care of your policy, and that's what they're there for. There are a lot of options available to you to help with the higher premiums that these breach levy scenarios fall into. 
you, and there are different unit structure choices, there's different options, there's different coverage levels, um, there's just a number of different things you can do to help with those premium costs. Um, and I, I think that ends my presentation, so if I'm willing to look forward to answering any questions that you may have.